It's Wednesday, May 31st here at the West End Gun Club. I'm at the Rimfire Range yet once again. We're out here this morning to do a run through of the June 2023 NRL 22 course of fire. The weather out here is pretty good. I think it's about 50 degrees right now, heavily overcast. Our weather in Southern California, or at least this part of Southern California that we're in, it's been really good the past couple of weeks. It's been around, I don't know, 70 degrees, you know, highs in, for the day. And I don't know, and come May, it usually that's when it starts warming up in Southern California. Or, you know, we're usually hovering around 80 degrees, 85 degrees. But right now we're doing pretty well. I prefer this weather. I like it nice and cool which is kind of odd considering I live in Southern California, but I'm enjoying this weather while I can. Because come June and July, it's going to start warming up for sure. In any case, let's go ahead and get all the props and barricades pulled out, and we'll go ahead and start doing this run-through of the NRL 22 Course of Fire. near me far near back change now Near. Safe. Going to fart. This. Safe. Far near. Safe, missed two. Oh, back change. Sorry about that. Plenty of time. Just an FYI, as we go through this June 2023 NRL 22 course of fire run through, I didn't bring my long lens, so I don't have a camera on target. Do I have a trigger cam? I did own one. I did sell it because it didn't fit my Zcos. So I 
decided to sell it with the hopes that they'll release a new version that'll fit on larger uh, eyepiece or ocular bells. In any case, the first stage we ran through is called Remember to Reapply. It's a 12 round stage, we have three targets. We have a one and a half inch at 40, two inch at 60, and a two and a half inch at 70 yards. Uh, there's no real restrictions here. It's a ladder stage, 10 points, 120 points possible. It's a 12 round stage. Uh, standing rifle and all gear in hand, mag and action open, the usual, uh, usual deal. On start signal, you will assume position on the lowest ladder rung and engage the targets with one shot each in the following order, moving positions up, to the, up the ladder after every three shots. So first rung, you do not near to far. Second rung, far to near. Third rung, far to near. And then fourth rung, near to far. So it's near far, far near, far near, near far. All shits are, shots are hit to, or missed to move on. So I did, miss a, I did uh, run through with the my Voodoo and then one with the 1022. It's a pretty straightforward stage. I didn't drop two rounds on the 1022. Don't know why, just a little bit wobbly because it is a lighter gun. Um, but this is a pretty straightforward stage. Nothing really here to, uh, to really uh, stress on other than the fact that you just need to make, you get your stable positions from each of the rungs. If you want to use an extra bag for your body fill, for your elbow, your shooting elbow, that might help here. Uh, on the second rung, uh, since we're shooting an upward angle around three or four degrees, four degrees maybe, you're kind of crunched down. So some people may, at my range, um, at the West End Gun Club, if they're shooting at the upward angles from the second rung, if you're bigger or taller, you may have to sit down. I was able to kneel and kind of scrunch my body and it does kind of cramp up your ab, your abdomen, but that's the way I did it. And you get really good, really good and stable from this position if you can do it. Uh, third rung, I... You can probably body feel pillow this one. I ended up just shooting, you know, two knees down, and that's a little more still for me. Uh, I didn't I didn't run the second bag. I just ran one bag. And then, uh, but if you wanted to run that third, that second bag, body fill a third rung, and then fourth rung, pretty much just stand, feet apart, kind of hunch forward, and you should be able to get your shots off pretty easily. So uh, yeah, not much to say here. I think it's pretty straightforward. I, I always consider like the ladder kind of your skills stage here or the skills kind of builder for NRL 22 because it requires you to reset from a new position like in, you know, in the same spot every time. So it's a kind of good skill stage. So learn how to shoot off a ladder if you can. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to our next course of fire or next stage of fire rather. Barely nicked it. Oh. Although there's some wind out there, my bipod can't touch the ground. Make sure it's not touching. Uh. Two, three, two. Seat of the chair. Three, two, three, two. This is going to be the bomb part. Bipod's going to be in the way. I know that. Through. Get it. Try to get angle on target. Whew. Oh, wow. That was tight. Okay. Whew. 
Stay. Stay. Fall over. Okay, fall over rather. Safe. Bipod off. Safe. Next stage we're running through is called Sandcastle, 100 second part time, 10 rounds. We have a three inch target at 100 yards, that's it. Restriction is no bipod can touch the ground. 10 points, 100 points possible. Uh, so you start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open as per usual. On a start signal, engage the target in the following order and manner. Five gallon bucket, three shots, two gallon bucket, two shots. The chair back, three shots, and the chair seat, two shots. All shots are hit or miss to move on. So. Um, I have to look at my first, my, my second, my first run rather with the Voodoo, why I barely finished with enough time. I did make my hits on all, both runs with the Voodoo and the 1022. 1022 was a little faster, well, significantly faster, so I'm gonna have to watch the uh, replay. But I don't know why it took me so long with the Voodoo. Um, so there's gonna be some weird issues, or unique issues with our range at the West End Gun Club. Again, we're shooting at an angle. Um, I elect to use my bipod in this manner where I'm straddling the edges of the bucket. You can, if you can fit your bipod on top of it, go for it. But I like to shoot in a sitting position. It's comfortable for me. You can try to shoot prone. It might work for you off the bucket or the five gallon bucket. I did shoot prone here. So it might be faster for you to shoot prone and prone. When you go to the, uh, the chair SPAC, um, I did use two bags in this case. Um, this support bag for my, my to fill my elbow, the, the wee bad pump pillow. And then I have my Coltac D bag, the flat bag, and I use that to rest on top of the back, uh, seat back. And when I transition to the seat, which is gonna be the biggest issue in this stage at the West End Gun Club, we're shooting an upward angle. It's gonna be so low, like it's, it's low but high at the same time. And at this angle, it's possible that you're gonna block, the seat back will block the scope. So we have a little, I have a little, um, piece of wood that we put underneath that we may angle it up so you don't have the seat back blocking your field of view but I was able to shoot it however um, my position was a sitting position and I kind of I tilted my head to the side which is terrible um, but it works for me I can get away with the parallax issues and it's a three inch and 100 yards which is a relatively big target all things considering you may elect to shoot some kind of quasi prone if you want I think one option is to try it in this method where you suit suit kneeling and then come down. And if you can support the rifle in this manner, you might be able to get it. But in this case, I'm seeing it that it's, the seat back is blocking the, the scope, unless you come to the very edge of this front of the seat. So we're likely gonna have to angle this up using the wood that I have. We'll have it angled up so the seat back is not blocking your field of view on your scope. Um, but in any case, in this manner it might work for you. It'll be more comfortable. Um, Definitely something to consider if you're gonna to come to the West End Gun Club to shoot our venue. We are shooting upwards angle, so take that into account for this stage, the specific stage of fire and the course of fire. But let's go ahead and move on to our next stage. Port side. Safe. 
miss. Is it hit to move on? No, it's not. Then we do small, small, near far. Okay, got it. 96.70. a little bit here. Oh, I missed that. Parallax. Oh. Support side. I'll go safe. And yeah, support side. This hit parallax hit and a K is moving side to side, so I gotta wait for it to stop. Hit safe, small, small, near far. Hit. Parallel. Hit. Safe. 94-1. The third stage which we ran through is called Summertime Flies. 100 twists like a part-time 10 rounds. We have the KYL rack but split in half. We have the quarter inch and half inch at 45 yards and the three quarter inch and one inch at 60 yards. This is the bonus time stage so if you finish with extra time on the clock you get bonus points. Standing, you guys start standing, rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, the shooter will take a prone, supportive position and engage the targets with one shot each, large to small, far to near. You will then switch to support side and engage the targets with one shot each in reverse order, near to far, small to large. You will then transition to support side or strong side again and engage the near quarter inch and then the far three quarter inch targets with one shot each. So just think um, KYL rack, large to small, then support side, small to large, and then switch back to regular side, and you're going to shoot the small targets near to far. So small target quarter inch, and then small target three quarter inch. It's pretty straightforward. And then when it says support side, just remember it's going to be support eye, shoulder, and hand. So I'm a right-handed shooter. When I go left side, I have to shoot with my left hand. You can't pull the trigger with your right hand. I know a lot of people have been trying to do that, but we have to tell them, hey, you got to use your left hand. That's just the rule. Um, get used to that, and that's just how it runs. In any case, when I was, I, I cleaned it with the Voodoo, and then I, uh, wait, did I clean with the Voodoo? No, I dropped one with the Voodoo. I think I dropped a small, a small target with the Voodoo. Yeah, from what, I, I dropped the small target with my uh, support side. So my first shot, quarter inch, I missed. But with the Voodoo, or 1022, I missed two shots. I think one uh, up top with the strong side, and then one, uh, the quarter inch on support side. Uh, when I was going through this stage, I was uh, at a time when I was running through the course of fire in my head, planning it out before I got to the range. I was thinking this would probably be the hardest one stage for most people at this range because we're going to have to put the KYLs on different levels. So unfortunately, when people start shooting support side, they're going to have to learn, okay, they can't just get comfortable in this position and then, and then hit laterally. They're going to have to also adjust up and down. So it's going to take a lot of practice in and just learning how to do use your support side uh, when you're shooting for prone. And a lot of people don't practice being able to maneuver in support side. A lot of people just, they'll practice one position and they just, you know, they'll shoot, you know, 20, 30 rounds like this and you're like, okay, I'm good. But they don't learn how to shoot 
support side, but also moving from different positions, different angles. So need to learn how to do that, uh, especially for this venue, because again, we're splitting the KYL. The 45 inch, uh, 45 yard targets will be on the ground. And then the 60 yard target KYLs will be up like, I don't know, what is that? Eight feet high, eight feet taller than the ground. So you're gonna have to learn how to shoot uh, movements, uh, different angles and adjust your bag with your, you know, in a support side manner. But that's just the way this venue is. Uh, but that's all I have for this stage. For those of you on flat ranges, this is going to be a pretty simple stage. Uh, you got plenty of time. I think I finished with 90 seconds both times, roughly around there with both the bolt and the semi. Um, but just make sure you get good, clean hits on support side, especially when it comes to that quarter inch KYL target. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to the fourth stage. Don't know how much time I have. Ooh, timed out. my dope here first it's all good safe Oh, keep an eye on that muzzle. Let's go. Safe. Safe. Whew, 113. 
The fourth stage we ran through is called Campfire Stories, 120 second part time, 12 rounds. We have three targets. We have a two inch at 76, two and a half inch, two and a half inch at 87, and a three inch at 98 yards, all on double hangers. Uh, the restriction is no part of the BIPOC can touch the ground, 10 points, 120 points possible. You're gonna start standing rifle and all gear in hand, mag in action open. On the start signal, you will build a position on one of the quadrants of the tire and engage the targets from near to far, one shot each. Then move to another quadrant of the tire, repeat the engagement, repeat this engagement two more times. You may only use one quadrant of the tire once, each quadrant of the tire once. Targets hit or miss move on. When I say quadrants, if you look at the diagram on the course of fire, it basically just draw an X and you have to shoot in each of the, uh, the quadrants created by that X. On match day, I'll put some masking tape or something to define the quadrants. But in any case, this stage, when I did two run throughs, I timed out with the bolt gun, with the voodoo, and I finished with about six seconds with the 1022. Granted, I was a little bit more comfortable in the second run. Obviously, once you try it one time and you try it the second time immediately after, you can do a little bit better. I, tr I dropped with two bags, or I, I started the stage with two bags. Um, one, to just get a good elevation on the rifle because we are shooting upward angle, of course. In all honesty, you might need a taller bag. Uh, people who come to the West End Gun Club shoot our venue, you may need a taller bag, and if anything, you might actually need something like this, but you'll need something for rear support. Um, you can try to run like a big bag and maybe just use your knee for support here. Um, if this is kind of wobbly though, I elected to shoot just the medium bag with my rifle. So I will use a 1022 here as an example. I ran the medium bag on the tire, dropped my gun down, um, and then I was able to sort of get into a sitting position on my butt and try to get low on the gun. Um, you may have to do a crouch position. Some people can't, might not be able to, to do that. So you can get down in a crouch position and shoot like this, but then you'll need some quarter support bag, maybe a big bag like the pump pillow or a mega bag, and you can try to shoot like this. Uh, but I repeated this um, manner on the right side, came back, also shot with a bag, here, but I elected to shoot bipod off the front. That was my goal when I planned it in my head is to shoot bipod from the front quadrant and I shot that one last. So I shot here, used my, used this bag here as rest. Um, I can probably game it a little bit more with my, cause I, with the Voodoo, I ended up using this as my rear support. I think I kind of leaned forward on it and didn't really get an opportunity to use the pistol grip here. Um, on the Schmidian bag for rear support because my, I think my bipod is extended far out on the forehand. But my thought process here is if you're going to use the bipod up front, let's just do that last. Shoot the positions without the bipod first. So I shot these three positions first. And then for the final quadrant, I extended the, I pulled the bipod legs down and shot there. So that was my goal to save time or at least make it more efficient. Theoretically, you can go bipod first and then fold it. Um, you can't leave the bipod extended because if you try to shoot this stage, it's gonna, you can, maybe you can try to sandwich your, your bipod here. I didn't think about that, but I was gonna use the bag on the sides and the rear. So I didn't wanna have my bipod extended and shoot here first and then have to fold it because that, I think it's easier for me to bring down the legs than to put them back up. So that's why I elected to shoot this stage last with the bipod. A lot of stuff to think about on this one. Um, Definitely type time to consider this stage. I think this is probably the most difficult stage in this course of fire. That's just my opinion. Um, but yeah, definitely practice this one. If you got a tire at home or something, just kind of think about how you're gonna approach this. And keep in mind, if you're shooting flat ground, this will be maybe easier. If you're shooting elevated position, just keep that and just keep those thoughts in your head as far as how you're gonna adjust on the fly. Uh, but let's go ahead and move on to the last stage.
low on that. Plenty of time. Safe. Safe. Eighty nine three three. Eighty nine three three. The last stage we ran through is called Home Depot Run. Hundred twists like a part time ten rounds. We have uh, two one and one and a half inch targets on double hangers at fifty yards. They're in their spaced apart, no more than ten yards. And then we have a four inch on a double hanger at hundred yards. It's kind of bisecting those two fifty yard targets. Um, they can't be more than ten yards apart. Here we have them at five yards, roughly, because that's kind of the limitation here at the range. Uh, restriction is bipod can't touch the ground. So it's 10 points per impact, 100 points possible. We're going to start standing, rifle grounded by the prop. The magazine's out, 10 feet away, all gear in hand, mag in act, or sorry, action open. The magazine's not in the rifle. You're going to, um, on a start signal, shoot a retrieved rifle and magazine and build a position on the sawhorse and engage the targets as follows. Left large, right large, left small, right small, far target. You will then conduct a mag change, so there's required magazine change, and then build a position on the center block and repeat the engagement. Left large, right large, left small, right small, far target. So it's pretty straightforward. Now the issue here is kind of reading grammar. It says standing, comma, rifle grounded by the prop, comma, magazine out and 10 feet away. All gear, comma, all gear in hand, comma, action open. So if you read that, technically it says your magazine needs to be 10 feet away from the rifle. I'm not entirely sure that's what they meant. So I'm not entirely sure where you're starting. So you can either start 10 feet away and have the magazine down next to the rifle, or you can have the magazine 10 feet away and you go get the magazine and come back to the rifle. I'm not entirely sure how it's supposed to be read. Personally, I'm reading it as, I think they're, they intended it that the magazine would be next to the rifle, but out of the rifle and you start standing 10 feet away from the gun and you run up to the gun, get everything and then put the gun on the prop. So I kind of, now as far as the Voodoo run, I ran the Area 419 rail changer plate with the Coltac D-bag. So I put the bag on under time because it says all gear in hand. So technically that's your gear. So usually when you have your rifle in hand, your, even if the, the bag is attached to your gun, it's in your hands. So I interpret this, if you're starting away from the gun, technically that rail, that rail mounted bag needs to be in your hand. So I took that literally from that point and I, and I put the bag under time. It's not a big deal. I can put the bag on relatively quickly, but that's how I kind of ran that stage just for the sake of um, semantics. But I finished with plenty of time both times. I think I finished with like 30 seconds left on the clock. Uh, both 
Both runs were clean with the Voodoo and the 1022. I didn't think there were any issues here. Um, I ran two bags, uh, either the rail mounted bag or the the uh, medium bag with the Voodoo, with the uh, 1022, and I ran the Wee Bad Pump Pillow for uh, body support, body fill support here on the Sawhorse and also at the center block. Um, not much else to say here. I think this is probably the, one of the, the easiest one of the easiest stages of this course of fire with the tires being the hardest. Um, anyway, that's it for the uh, course of fire. Let's go ahead and tear everything down and we'll pack it all in and do a, do a summary before we leave. As far as the June 2023 NRL 22 course of fire, I would rate it as moderately difficult. April and May I felt were very good for beginners and I felt that those are very straightforward, simpler stages in those courses of fire. But the June course of fire I feel is moderately difficult and it's gonna cause a few people some problems. Um, going back, I feel that at least at this range, the tire stage will be most difficult. And uh, the KYL stage might be a problem at this range simply because, as I said, we're shooting it up an upward angle. And the KYL stage, we had to split the KYL targets. The first, um, the closest ones are going to the ground, like ground level, level with the shooter. And then the 60 yard targets will be up about eight feet high. So that might cause a problem for those, especially in the support side. Um, Sawhorse stage I felt was pretty straightforward. The the chair and bucket stage, nah, that one's relatively simple, I feel. And then the ladder stage is your typical ladder stage. Um, I don't feel that there's too much difficulty there. I feel like the tire stage in the KYL will probably be the most problematic, at least at this range. I don't know about the other ranges, but this range it will be. Um, our next match at this uh, club, at the West End Gun Club, will be, I think, June 25th, if I recall my dates correctly. June 25th. I should be correct on that. Sunday, June 25th, fourth Sunday of the month. And, uh, but yeah, hopefully you can get out to a match in your area to shoot this course of fire. I feel this is a pretty good one, at least from terms of challenging, a little bit more challenging than the last month. In all honesty, when I ran these, uh, just kind of cold, I did drop a few rounds. Uh, I don't think, did I, I clean, I cleaned one stage for sure. I cleaned the sawhorse stage. I cleaned the ladder stage. I cleaned the chair stage, I think. So I did clean three, I think. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. I just wanted to run through it, and then I've got an idea of how I'm going to lay out the stages for this course of fire at our range. I do need some taller targets, uh, taller targets for at least uh, one of the stages because you can't see it. I had to get it up off the ground because the berm is blocking it. So I'm going to probably, I'm looking at getting some new stands. Um, I saw a post in the NRL 22 Match Directors Facebook group that there's going to be some a new stand design coming out somebody's making them and i put my name on the waiting list to get a sample of those because i'm curious to try those out however um also what happened the last match some of you probably you didn't see it um but the atlas target works kyl broke this is the half inch target it just snapped off uh right at where it meets the i guess the hanger and i emailed atlas target works and i asked them because uh so here, what actually happened was uh, one of the other shooters had his own KYL, also Atlas Target Works. I was going to pull the JC Steel to spare that I had, but he said, no, I got Atlas Target Works. Um, he brought it out of his truck, and I was surprised it was a different design. It's a two-piece design where you have a hanger, like the hanger that goes on the bar, and then it hooks, the targets actually hook onto that. And I was kind of surprised. Then I emailed uh, Atlas Target, Target Works when I got home, and I told him, hey, um, when did you change the design? Because mine broke and i was just curious when it came out with a new one and he asked me um, i think his, I believe his name is brad of atlas star wars he asked me hey where did it break and i'm like well it broke right where it kind of hangs at the, uh, the the eyelet and he said yeah it's kind of a known issue on this design and so he that's why they came out with a new design apparently so he's actually sending me a new set uh, at least the the quarter inch to one inch set so i should have those soon but today i ran the jc steel targets that i had those are my spares but this one broke, so. In any case, um, not much else to say about this course of fire. Definitely practice it if you can at your home range or whatever, and hopefully you do well in your the venue that you shoot at for your matches. I'm gonna go ahead and pack the rest of my gear up and then get out of here. I'm gonna run some errands before I go home, but that's it for today, Wednesday, May 31st, here at the West End Gun Club. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vlog.